Hello again everybody, welcome into CM42 TV. Today we're going to chat about a brand new movie that I saw this week. Lovely being back in the cinema. It took a wee, but like a month away from the cinema and I say that, obviously there's people who don't go to the cinema at all, but me as a, as a cinema goer, you know, I always try to make sure to go with my unlimited card and things like that. Um, there was a period where I was going every single week and we would love to keep that up, but you know, life is, life is back now, you know what I mean? So like things get in the way, people are busy. So I've not been able to get to the cinema as much as I would want to go to the cinema, but it's lovely being back. So the last time I was at the cinema, well, I saw Lightyear, which is, I guess, was my first time back, but that was at a different cinema. Uh, and I really liked Lightyear, by the way. would actually really recommend it. It was actually really funny and a lot better than expected, not, not expecting it to be bad. But, you know, you get like a spin-off of such an iconic film, you know, you think it's going to go one way, but it was actually really good. So I totally recommend the new Buzz Lightyear film. Um, but the film I'm talking about today is Elvis, starring Austin Butler and Tom Hanks. And this was a film that like kind of came out of nowhere for me. I'm not like a... I can see that I'm a relatively young person. I don't know much about Elvis's career. Um, I know all, I know the hits and things like that, you know. I work at a theatre that recently put on like an Elvis tribute night thing. And it was like an Elvis tribute act, the impersonator guy. I know they're like all over the world and stuff, but this one was <laughs> at, at my work came in and did a show and like it was it was really good and stuff so you know I, I was familiar you know with the tunes not only just because they're Elvis tunes that have been around for generations but also because it was relatively recent in my mind you know so going into this one as well I'll kind of enjoy like the biopic genre you know what I mean um Bohemian Rhapsody I still think holds it in terms of like my favorite biopic I've not seen them all of course I'm sure there's ones from years ago um I'm sure there's a Muhammad Ali one that I've not seen that I'm really keen to watch and there's plenty of other ones, a Bruce Lee one, I'm sure. Oh, I, I did watch a Bruce Lee biopic that was brought out in the mid-2000s, which I can't remember the name of right now, but I really enjoyed that one, and I believe there was a newer one made as well. Plenty of things like that, you know, so I enjoy that kind of idea. But Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, is the one that I still kind of hold in the highest regard in terms of, like, not only... I know there was, there was some... It wasn't all accurate, you know, but it's just the presentation of the film and how... And the enjoyment levels of the film, mixing in with the music and stuff, and then that whole recreation of the Live Aid performance and stuff. That, to me, sits at the top. The other one that's relatively recent over the last few years is Rocket Man, which I liked but didn't love. So, I kind of, those are the two that stick out my mind. And I'd say Elvis isn't quite as good as Bohemian Rhapsody, but I think it's a little bit better than Rocket Man in terms of my kind of rankings of the most recent kind of musical biopics, you know, and there's plenty of other biopics, obviously, but just in terms of ones that I've watched recently. So, uh, yeah, Austin Butler, man, I knew he was a good actor. I liked him in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There's a total twist on his performance in that film, which is really good, so I kind of was aware of him. Um, and apparently, this is him singing in the film. I don't know if there's been some support to that, whether it's been like, you know, he's, he's done like lip syncing, and then he has recorded the song in post, and then they've kind of mashed up with Elvis's actual voice, because this just sounds ridiculous, you know what I mean? It just sounds so accurate, so powerful, a lot of it is very emotional and stuff, and he just nails it. And again, I don't know Elvis that well, not personally anyway. Um, I don't know his music that well, I know, the, I know the hits. But it's not as if I've like sat in a dark room and closed my eyes and put on Elvis and headphones and just really am familiar with his voice. I don't know if this sounds you know, exactly like Elvis' singing voice. But to me, an outsider looking in who doesn't know um, as much about Elvis as a lot of people probably seeing this film do, um, it to me sounded pretty <laughs> pretty accurate to me. So I thought that was an amazing performance, not only just the singing, but just the characteristics, the walk, the mannerisms, the hair, the kind of facial expression and stuff, the kind of uh, dance moves that he's doing on stage. And I, obviously I don't know how accurate it is either, but I'm assuming this is kind of what the story went like. But just the idea of it being in the 50s and the 60s and he's kind of moving the way he was moving um, and, you know, being like blasphemy and, and being sent to prison and stuff like that, losing his rights and stuff just because he's like moving his hips in a kind of sensual way because, I mean, and also like the racial undertones to this film as well are so prevalent as well, you know what I mean, where it's like Elvis, like a white person can't move like that, you know, so it's just ridiculous. But, you know, Elvis, it starts off, I quite like the idea, like Tom Hanks is like his manager or whatever and he kind of like, at, at the start, it kind of like flashes a few things like what could potentially have happened to him. And we all know, you know, like Elvis kind of going down, you know, and, and going off the rails a little bit and then losing his life. Um, and it kind of starts off with Tom's, Tom Hanks character being like, oh, I, I didn't kill him. Like music killed him and love killed him and stuff. And then it flashes back to when he was a wee boy 
and he sees like lots of soul singers and stuff like that and that really sparks his love for music and that style of performing and stuff. So that was all like that, bringing that kind of aspect and that genre of music into his performances, I thought that was really interesting. And then seeing how like the, the media and the police and stuff reacted to him, you, you just didn't expect someone, sorry I got something in my you didn't expect someone like him, um, like a, a white guy or you know like a, I don't know, his, his, his upbringing, where he's from in the south and stuff like that. And making females, you know, reacting a certain way and, and, and like making noises and stuff like that when just he's doing like his moving of the hips and the legs and stuff and the pelvis and stuff like it's just it's really funny that scene where the, the females start like the scream just kind of comes from down beneath and it just get cut explodes over. Like, it's so funny, it's just those like initial reactions. Imagine seeing that for the first time, you know, and then you know, obviously, he, he was supposed to go to the army. But one thing I didn't like about the film is that you, you were told that okay. You know, you're going to go and you're going to serve in the military and you're going to serve your country for two years and then you can come back and then you're going to be an actor because you're really famous and really liked but you can't sing because that's blasphemy. And, like, I didn't understand that so much. But then you see him go to the army and you just don't see any of it. It's like completely flash forward two years later. Like, I was kind of hoping to see some of him in the actual army and seeing what he went through and stuff like that. How did he use his music? How did he use that as inspiration to help him afterwards and stuff? Then you see him doing some movies and stuff like that, like A Star Is Born and stuff. He keeps mentioning that coming up with Barbara Streisand and stuff. So, but the majority of it is just this, obviously they're focusing on his music career and stuff like that, and seeing how big and how famous he got after all that stuff. You know, how he was told to perform in one way. You know, I guess the message of the film is like this as well. He's perf he's told to perform and sing and dance in one way. You know, he always like for example Christmas. You know, like it's it was going to be a very wholesome performance. He's going to sing. You know, these Christmas songs. It's going to be played every year in homes, at parties, at Christmas nights out, this is going to be like Elvis is the voice of Christmas and he doesn't want to do that. He sees that there's a lot of money in that but he wants to perform the way that it makes him happy and he kind of like defies orders. And I did think that was a bit repetitive after a while in the film. Like three or four times that happens, you know, where it's like I'm being told this but I'm going to do that. And I, didn't, I thought that was a wee bit repetitive and they could have probably done that a little bit less. Um, that, I think that's something that I didn't like about the film as much. But seeing how popular and how famous, like I was also saying this to my mate Fram that I was seeing the, the film with, I was like, who in our lifetime is ever going to be as famous as Elvis was, as Michael Jackson was, as the Beatles were? You know what I mean? Like, there's no one really in like the past twenty years, and who is going to come along that is so famous that they can't leave their house, they can't be in a car without being chased, they can't be in public without being grabbed at and stuff like that. And obviously there's like very famous people and you see like for example Tom Hanks, the great segue, there you go, and relevant to the film. Recently Tom Hanks is so famous that people found out that he was staying at a hotel, he comes down, maybe it was actually the premiere of Elvis, he comes down to the lobby with his wife and the pressure all over them to the point where his wife gets shoved and pushed to the ground and Tom Hanks loses it. Like, Tom Hanks is one of the most famous people in the world, but he still doesn't have... He's not Elvis-level famous. You know what I mean? Like, I guess you've got DiCaprio, you know, singers. You know, what singers are that popular? Then we started, you know, talking about, like, maybe it's, like, the rise of, like, streaming and, and social media, Spotify, Apple Music, things like that, where everything's so accessible. It's the same with actors as well. Everything's so accessible. So back in the day when Elvis was kicking around... You had to go and see him in a show. I know he, he, that was another big thing as well. He didn't tour outside of America because his manager was like in trouble with the government and stuff like that. I thought that was interesting. How did they manage to convince him to stay in Vegas for so long? And there was imagine being in the crowd in that original Vegas run like that just would have been an amazing thing. But um, yeah, just in terms of being that famous, like, and that's what's in about the rise of streaming and stuff like that. Like we, we, back in the day, you would go and try and see an Elvis show. You would have to try and save up money to try and get the Elvis CD. Or the record, you would play it in your record player, and you'd play it in your room, and you would have those like eight or nine songs, and that was yours. And if you were lucky enough to have a CD player in your car later on, you could listen to it driving to work and stuff. And that was like, and I kind of grew up a little bit in that generation. Like Spotify kind of came into my life, and streaming and stuff like that. Maybe like 2009, 2010. So I had a good like 12 years of that, you know, where I was like always buying CDs, and you only had and, and DVDs and stuff like that as well, VHS tapes. You couldn't just go on YouTube and watch anything. If I want to go watch Elvis perform, I just need to put it on YouTube. Maybe that'd be a good reaction video for the channel. Or if I want to watch, you know, Elvis's life, I can watch this film. It's so easy, you know, whereas like back in the day, it was really limited. So I guess that kind of creates a kind of mystique and aura around performers, where it's like they're not just at your fingertips all the time. You need to kind of work for it 
to see them and you need to have money to buy their records and buy their DVDs and stuff. So maybe that's it as well. Like, it's just so like mysterious. Imagine seeing him. What's he going to look like now? What's he going to be wearing? What's his new song going to sound like? All that would be a thing. Whereas now if we want to see what Harry Styles is wearing or if we want to see what Justin Bieber his new song's going to be, I know Bieber's kind of getting past it a little bit now, but he was, you know, the biggest star in the world at one point. You can just look on your phone, you know, and we didn't have that with Elvis, so um, I thought that was really interesting as well. I can't imagine living in a world where someone was that famous, you know, so, yeah, I was trying to think of comparisons, like, who's the biggest stars in the world? Taylor Swift? Ed Sheeran? You know what I mean? And then there's, like, the, po the politicians and stuff like that, and it's like, it's just not the same, so, who in the world is so famous that it's like, they can't leave their house you know, you see loads of things online about people like TMZ and stuff like, I guess Harry Styles and, and people like that, but who are just like total, so famous they can't go out, you know? Um, famous sport people like, I don't know, Tom Brady, people like that. Not really, you know what I mean? They're very, very famous, but they can they can live their life to a degree. Whereas Elvis is like, but he could have embraced that. That's like who, what made him who he is, but yeah. Really enjoyed the film. It's two hours 40. It's a little bit long. Um... It moves along quite quickly, but it does, the, the story feels a little bit repetitive. I understand that is the story of his life, and that's just how it was. Um, he probably did defy orders three or four different times, but uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. But it's a really good film, and I would totally recommend checking it out. It was really cool seeing it in the cinema to hear the songs and the good sound in the speakers, so I'd check it out in the cinema before it disappears. But if you're an Elvis fan, if you're a fan of that style of music, if you're a music fan in general, actually, all these musical biopics are very interesting, so yeah, let me know what you thought, if you thought Elvis was a great movie, what's your favourite Elvis song, and if you think I should react to any Elvis performances, leave them below, and maybe I will. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all next time.